will be the Wolves and their season pivot to get us off and running. Played his rugby all over the world. Born and raised in New Zealand. Played professionally in France and Wales. Been with Sterling for a good few years now. And Holden steers it between the uprights. First blood, Sterling Wolves. Sterling knocking at the door, spur away. The age grade flanker held up a couple of meters out. As close as the Wolves have been. Bryce, the former warrior, just short again. Benedict Grant into Hiddleston, held by Hiddleston. Sterling as close as that. Jackson barking the orders, here it comes. It's Marcus Holden. The veteran strolls in. Sterling Wolves seize their moments. And the game's first try belongs to the home side. Burgess to Tom Gordon, making a beeline for two tacklers. Steamrolling both of them, bringing out all the skills. He's got pace too, Tom Gordon. Where's the cover? Gordon still hacking on. Can he ground it? Oh, it's incredible! One movement on the goal in all line. his professional matches, Short, one onto the goal in line. all his years in New Zealand and Scotland, Tom Gordon will never score a better try. It's globetrotter stuff from the Warriors' flanker. It's three times now they've held the Warriors at bay in this kind of position, and now they look to embark on a rampage from deep. Jardin for McGee for Winters. Ali Miller tracking back, Winters too fast, the inside ball to McGee, burning for the corner, and scoring! <laughs> Stunning from Sterling! <laughs> Off turnover ball, they cleave their elite rivals open, and Kyle McGee has a try to match that of Tom Gordon. Captain Kennedy, a local boy from Alva, just down the road. Will throw in five metres from the Glasgow line. Sterling Wolves looking for a third try before half time. Holden, route one. Can he get a grounding? Yes, he can! Marcus Holden stampedes through the Warriors' defence. The Wolves have their third. Pass from Walker to McKnight. And McKnight has pace as well as physicality. Working his way off the wing, taking on Winters, eliminating Winters. Jackson recovers to halt to the marauding giant. Space and plenty blue jerseys now for Glasgow. It's Ferry dummying with Gordon on his shoulder. Now gets the offload away. Murphy Walker. Can he reach the line? No. Hiddleston. Piercing through. Glasgow Warriors well and truly back in this game now as they switch from defence to attack and score a length of the field effort of their own. Okay. Powell's first job, an important one, anchor this line out, set this mall drive, Rainer Kennedy trundling towards Glaswegian Pedert, he's there! It's a Bridgehawk bonus for the Sterling Wolves and they are taking it to these Warriors. And then wants to take it quickly. The Wolves not standing on ceremony despite their leads. Jackson drops it onto the toe. A lot of room in behind, and Jackson tearing after it. The ball, as the rugby ball is wont to do, takes a funny path, but Jackson dribbles it on, and Jackson has he scored. Oh, it's a try! The border's answer to Lionel Messi. Craig Jackson, ticky tackers his way to another wonderful Wolves try. And Glasgow need a quick response here. The ball might be their vehicle to get what they desire. Oh, the team in there, and the try awarded. Crabbing towards the touchline, but going forward just enough for Angus Fraser to score. And how Glasgow needed that. Kennedy, Williamson, Tom Gordon. That's a good play from McKnight again. 
Look at the pace of McKnight, wow! Ross McKnight, six foot five, on the rampage! And Glasgow Warriors not done yet. It's a brilliant line, wasn't it, Ross McKnight? And it, again, getting up to full, full pace. He's had a good game, especially in this second half. Williamson collected that one, and again, it's the mall. That big Glasgow engine being revved. Sterling Wolves creaking. Stop what? They're within four metres, one more chance to make it. Fraser over! Try given! And what life has been breathed back into this Super Series contest. What a chance Glasgow have now. It finishes at Bridge Hall. A first home win in 11 months. And what a win. Sterling Wolves 34, Glasgow Warriors A 31. Welcome to Megatland for this Friday night game in round three of the Fosrock Super Series Sprint as Burmuir Bears take on Ayrshire Bulls. Counter ruck by the Bulls there, Reese Cullen in the action, but Tristan Andrews breaks away. He's up to the 22, he's Jenkins on one side. And he's got Scott McGinley on the other. McGinley for the corner. The break by Tristan Andrews. And here he's winger Joe Jenkins with him, but opted instead to give it to McGinley, who still had a huge amount of work to do. So taken cleanly in the middle of that Bulls line out. Crabbing across field and gain income, the reinforcements. And the Bulls get that one driving forward towards the Bears' try line. This will be hard to stop. Over they go. There's the reply from the Ayrshire Bulls. The power of the pack. And it's 5 all here at Megatland. Regulation kick for the man brought in from Glasgow Hawks this week. And he just cuddles that one through between the uprights. And the Burham Bears retake the lead. Glendinning makes his way across to the right. Reese Cullen just waiting on this one. The pack are going to have a go first. Now comes Cullen. Step back inside there. Kerr Yule. He's dealt with well by the Bears defence. Once more the referee playing an advantage though. And now they switch sides. Out it comes to Jamie Shedden. Accelerates through. And he's somehow fought his way over that try line with two Burramuir Bears players hanging off him. But Shedden... Goes over for head sides, second try, the right winger popping up on the left. And it's Burmuir Bears 8, Ayrshire Bulls 12. Again, Bloodworth the target. Down it comes, good hit initially by Burmuir Bears, but now the Bulls get that one moving forward. And Stewart breaks away there, the referee keeping a very close eye on that, and they're over. Once more, great work by the Ayrshire Bulls forwards. It goes to the right. Good work there by Fitch just to hold his man up. Bears just a metre or two away. They keep it tight for now. Pick and go through the forwards. Referee playing advantage this time to the home side. They'll keep humming a go from there. They're over the try line. The pick and go. Strong work there by the Burramuir Bears forwards. The throw into the Bears line out five metres away from the Ayrshire Bulls. Try line, up goes Fisher, plucks that one from the air, hands it back. Now Tate comes round the corner and that Bears ball gathering momentum. In come the Bulls to try and stop it. Turn it away to the right, still going forward here, the bottom of your Bears. And over they go, over the try line. They are rewarded for early pressure in this second half. And it'll be the hooker. Corey Tate, the man to go over, to throw in. This time it's Kerry who goes up and again. The Burramuir Bears initially get this driving forward. But rather splinters, the Ayrshire Bulls defence have stopped it short for now. But again, the Burramuir Bears get this one going forward and over they go again. Great work by the Bears pack. And have been treated to 
a hugely entertaining match here in the Fosrock Super Series Sprint at Megatland and it finished Burrymuir Bears 29 Ayrshire Bulls 21 Liam McConnell then, the Edinburgh A skipper, the first out of the away changing rooms here at the Green Yards, as this of course is Edinburgh A's final involvement in the Fosrock Super Series Sprint for this season. Patrick Harrison with the throw, finds Badenhorst in the line. Harrison joins in the drive. This is an inviting opportunity for the Edinburgh A forwards in the early stages. Harrison has two tries to his name already in the competition and they're trying to steer the Edinburgh A hooker over the line. Finlay Brown raises the arm and within two and a half minutes, Edinburgh A take the lead. A quality piece of forwards play and the Southern Knights aware of the strength they're up against. Picked up again and once more, Edinburgh looking through Rudy Brown. The number eight in behind is Jones. Midfield linking up well, 12 to 13. Scott on towards Matt Curry. And Curry all the time just to swing round, tap down underneath the posts. Receiving the pass from his vice captain and outside centre is in for a second score. That coming 13 and a half minutes into the first half. 12 0 the score. And Demerill again just demolished there by a couple of Edinburgh A players. The long look pass and the interception. Look at this for a piece of acceleration in underneath the posts. Lightning quick stuff there from Cam Jones touching down. And we did see Edinburgh and Blair Kinghorn play a rather loose pass last night against Ulster and that was intercepted from a similar position on the park with uh, John Cooney finishing things off, well Cooney certainly couldn't have been any quicker, that's good determination shown there by the Edinburgh forwards, mopped up again Jones, pass is allowed to bounce there, O'Connell the skipper was set uh, in position O'Connell and a little offload there Lyde Lafferty was half through, still he's going, he's able to offload and it's uh, the tight head Angus Williams that finishes things off. I thought the opportunity perhaps had gone as uh, there was some uncertainty there, was Blythe Lafferty going to make his way into that 22 and escape the tensions of the Southern Knights defence? Is it going to be another Patrick Harrison score? Well this is prime position for Harrison, reaching high there, Jamie Campbell, Harrison joins in the drive, still just short as you see of that 5 metre line, but the ball Once. tucked under the right arm he's got a bit of room on the right hand side if he requires that room, but there's a keen illustration of the strength as they're up and over the line, and he's felt that there was as Colin mentioned, it was almost inevitable that that was going to result in a score and the referee Finlay Brown raising the arm this eating into the, the final few moments of this first half. Yes, Balls here. Balls here. Three minutes of the opening 40 left to play. Finley Brown jockeying for position as the, the Knights, a sustained spell, spell of pressure. And Alan Tate below us barking some instructions by way of the Southern Knights and coaching staff and players. The Knights then lunging for the line. The raised arm of the referee. The cheers coming from the main stand. And there was a lot of effort, a lot of um, will there. And the Southern Knights were able to get across. I think it may well be Alan Ferry. Tap. And again, you can no, see step, no, 19, step. Ben like Fotheringham, Reading himself, looking to carry support in behind. I think that was Sam Derrick that was looking to drive in just behind him. The no, referee jockeying no, for position no, again, six, right on that line. Then Southern Knights no, 16, players now no. get a little bit more movement across towards the, the right-hand side. Bran slipping and sliding as he tried to go himself. And the referee raising the arm. And you have to say that Southern Knights thoroughly deserving a score at the start of this Second period, Bet with the throw in, and one by Demerell in the line. Bet looking to try and get immediate control of the ball alongside him. There is Ben McLean. The night's been cheered on by a sizable contingent of supporters sitting below us in the main stand at the Green Yards, rumbling up in those final five metres. Edinburgh A then forced backwards. A group of players then cross over the line, controlled possession of the ball, and it's a third score for the Southern Knights this afternoon. Of course, uh, well known around Linlithgow, very well coached by the likes of Doogie Thompson as uh, Edinburgh A looking to respond very quickly and that's a real collision there between the open side flanker Blythe Lafferty and Robbie Chalmers but Lafferty has done enough to escape the attentions of the outside centre 
trying to ask a few more questions of the Knights playing a little bit of football long look pass out there and it's a direct one found Wells there Charlie Shule hoisted forward across towards Sweeney Sweeney then ball bounces favourably for him and Sweeney is over for the score as I say a favourable bounce Sweeney reading the flight of the ball accelerating found himself in space and again Edinburgh going from coast to coast quickly and a thoroughly entertaining contest draws to a close Southern Knights 21 Edinburgh Rugby E 47 Hello and welcome to a cold and breezy Golden Acre in the third game in round three of the Foz Rock Super Series Sprint as Watsonians take to the field looking to try and avenge last week's defeat to Edinburgh 8 while the home side Heriots will want to build on their performance against the Southern Knights where they picked up their first victory of the campaign. And McAndrew looking for some runners again and it's Campbell Wilson almost streaking through. And if he got a good look at that, inches away from the try line now. Ducking and diving and eventually Watsonians get over the line. The resistance from the home side yields and they go in for the opening score here. McCarroll loitering at the front of that line out. Linus throws in, finds Leishman, he's brought down, a little bit of movement behind that mall as well, but it's twisting and turning towards the side, it's dangerous here for Watsonians it's an opportunity here for Heriots and they manage to get their way over the line they reply with their potent driving mall and it looks like the pats in the back there are going to Wilson and Scott and Seb Cecil charges towards the Heriots line McAndrew finds Miller again. Miller's got Davis in the short line. And catapults himself into action as Irvin Hess now tries to barrel his way through. Two Heriots defenders. It's a matter of if they can get over that line and who's it going to be. And eventually they manage to get the ball in the hands of Beresford and he stretches over for another score. Such a powerful runner, the second row. Came off the bench last week. Takes three players to bring big Josh Scott down as well. Jones now opts to kick down field. It's ricocheted and Wilson tried to hack it through. It's ended up into the hands of Gray. Heriot's now in the 22. Watsonians having to retreat. Jones out the back door to King and King is going to squeeze it in the corner. Patient build-up play from Heriot's the home side. And the finesse at the end as Jones and King link up on the stand side here at Golden Acre. And it's a perfect response from the Nails. It's Heriot's 12, Watsonians 14. Watsonians are given the opportunity now to find their shape again. McAndrew finds Cecil, he picks it off the floor, he finds Wilson and Wilson charges towards the line. And once the defensive line was broken by the outside backs, it was a matter of picking them off and they eventually found Wilson. And Anderson will take his play in the, the back row. Linus finds his target. The mall is now set and Hughes adds a, a little bit of weight to the attacking effort. Wilson slightly protected there as it fragments and now it's open prairie again. And the captain Wilson goes over for his double. He's had a double against Southern Knights, a double against Edinburgh 8. And he's got two tries here against Watsonians and again the pendulum swings back towards the hosts he's been tackled by Ball Makara offloads in the hands of Boyle he's back in field to Jones Jones offloads he's found a player in acres of space and it's Callum Anderson and he's going to scorch in for a score Heriots take the lead for the first time in this game and it's awareness from Hughes and again the hands releases Anderson now Graham pivots with Baggett and he links up well and Johnny Morris charging forward and Baggett's got the ball through the hands quickly, Miller finds Guthrie Guthrie's got Irvin Hess on the wing there's a great cover and tackle there from Leishman now Watsonians will look to try and strike and re-establish their lead and Ross Graham powers towards the line and he gets the ball down as well powerful effort from the replacement hooker and yet again, we go back to all square, 26 points all. Here he is, piling the pressure at the, the breakdown and get the ball back and they can reply straight away. 
Linked back in field as Sadak charges forward now. McAndrew. He manages to release McLaren. And McLaren gets over the line. He powers his way forward. The replacement front row. And it's great play. And it's a great response from the home side. Irvin Hess running that acute line and presenting it back to Patterson. As Watt gets round the corner. Looks hard from that line out. Seb Cecil carries forward. Against the grain into the hands of Morris and the ball's been dislodged and now McCarroll looks to hack it downfield but Irvin Hess puts his body on the line and bag it it's spotted a space he gets the fending and gets the ball down and just when everybody thought that passage of play was gone Baggett was hot stepping towards the Heriot's line and it means it's Heriot's 33 Watsonians 31 in a fascinating and frenetic round 3 in the Fosrock Super Series sprint it finishes all square, it's Heriot's 33, Watsonian's 33.